Art. What is art? Art is a form of expression. It can be a story being told, a stance on someone's views, and it could be a way of persuading people to follow those ideals. It's like eating a piece of pie, basically. It can persuade us, it can inform us, or it could entertain us. That's the best thing about art. It can do all three of these things, and it's up to us, the quote-unquote art critics, to decide what that work could represent or mean. And no other art piece best represents that taste of pie better than Edmanniard Lewis's marble sculpture, Forever Free. And today, we'll be discussing more about this piece and what it means to the art world today. Hi, my name is Lancey Brooks, and today I will be covering Edmonia Lewis's work, Forever Free. Let's get started. Firstly, let's cover Edmonia's background to better understand her sculpture. Edmonia Lewis was born around 1844. The exact date is unknown, but many different sources say she was definitely born around the mid-1840s. She was the daughter of a black father and a Ajibawa mother. She was later taken to an orphanage before finally being claimed and raised by some of her mother's relatives. Edmonia's talents were immense growing up. She would attend Oberlin College in Ohio State to pursue a career in art. However, during her time at Oberlin, she was accused of poisoning her two white roommates in college. She was later acquitted of the charges, but at the expense of her education, and she got jumped by white folks for the incident. She would then be banned from attending Oberlin after being accused of stealing art supplies for her classes. Life was very rough, but with the support of her brother Sunrise, Imania was able to power through even the most severe situations in her life. She moved to Boston around 1863, right after she was banned from attending Oberlin, where she would work with a portrait sculptor by the name of Edward Brackett, who would mentor the young Edmonia and turn her into a sculptor. Despite her incredible talents, Edmonia was often a subject of criticism having been a black female artist, but that never stopped her from creating such amazing works in her life. She would later move to Rome, Italy for a while to continue her art career. She made many great works such as the Arrow Maker and the James Peck Thomas sculpture, but nothing even comes remotely close to her sculpture Forever Free as it is often considered her magnus opus. Forever Free is a marble sculpture depicting a black man and woman emerging from the bonds of slavery, breaking the chains after years of struggle and hardship. The man's left foot rests on a ball that looked to be once connected to the chains on his left leg. His right arm seems to be resting on the shoulder of the woman who's kneeling down next to him and looks to be praying. It looks like both figures, as a matter of fact, are looking up to God, thanking him for finally setting them free. But there's also a theory that they could be looking up to Abraham Lincoln in heaven for finally setting them free. As according to this quote in the Emancipation Proclamation, it says, On the first day of January, in the year of our Lord, 1863, all persons held as slaves within any state or designated part of the state, the people whereof shall then be in rebellion against the United States, shall be then, thenceforward, and forever free. The sculpture has a bit of a neoclassicism style with the way it's molded, it's sculpted, but that probably has a lot to do with Imania's time being in Rome in the later part of her years. The figures are pretty recognizable, 
for a man and a woman, but it seems to endorse gender stereotypes, with the man standing while the woman's kneeling, his protective hand on her shoulder, which suggests that he's in charge and she's just there to be in support of him. But given the times that this was made in, it can be understood why the stereotypes are there. This piece, while was very controversial per se, it gets compared to another piece that's probably even more controversial than itself. That piece being the Emancipation Memorial by Thomas Ball, created in 1876. This piece has the same story in a sense to Edmonio's piece, but the difference is, is that it seems to be more racially charged in a sense. There's been a public backlash to this piece recently, and many people have called for this piece to be taken down because of what it stands for. The statue depicts Abraham Lincoln standing high and mighty, standing over a black man who he said he would break free from slavery in the chains. The black man's kneeling down, looking like he has his fist out, you know, finally looking like he's going to stand up as if he's finally broken from this slavery that he's been so heavily garnered in. But this piece is very controversial because it seems as if it's depicting Abraham Lincoln as this godlike figure who's offering freedom to this black man who just spent most of his life in slavery. And it's very controversial because Abraham Lincoln was white and for him to stand over a black man like that kind of is kind of like depicting his quote unquote godlike power and like enforcing it over the black male. So there, there was a huge controversy and outbreak and many have called for this piece to be taken down. But going back to Lewis's piece, Lewis's piece has many neoclassical elements to it. The way the clothes is folded and wrinkled, and the way the form of the figures are, everything just screams neoclassicism. And this is probably due to Edmonia moving to Rome after her time in the U.S. for a while. And to go back to her, her piece and the story of it all. Even though the slaves were granted their freedom at the end of the Civil War, they were still oppressed and unequal to white people. This idea is illustrated through the broken chains that are still around the figure's limbs if you look closely. Even though the chains are broken, they're still wrapped around the limbs, which could mean that, yes, we're broken free from slavery, but we're still not equal to the white man. This would be a very precedented state for the next, cu for the next couple hundred years, even to the present today, in which we're still fighting racism and overcoming odds between racial inequalities in the country here. Emania Lewis made a mark when she created this piece. Despite a few controversial takes on it, her piece horrifyingly depicts what we're still going through as a country to this very day and how much work we have to go through in order to find peace within the world. Emania herself may be long gone, having died in 1907, but her presence still remains to this day, and this piece is a prime example of that. A painful reminder, yet a necessary one, to learn about the country's history, and what we can do going forward to change all that for the better, and truly be forever free. This video was brought to you by multiple different sources. I'd like to thank Lisa Farrington for her textbook on African American art, a visual and cultural history. The 19th Century Art Facos.com, American Art Student Illustrating website, ImaniaLewis.org, The Woman and Art Blog, TheArtStory.org, Biography.com, TheGuardian.com, and the WLIW FM 88.3. I'd also like to thank these other websites for supplying some of the images as well. I'd like to thank the ibtimes.sg, battlefortsnow.com, theguardian.com, ancientfaces.com, and mapsofboston.com. Thank you for watching. Go outside and play.